On today's show, we are going to start a brand new project where we build a 3D printer from scratch. Stick around. Hey, welcome to The First Layer. My name is Richard Cleveland. I'm your host here three times a week, Monday, Thursday, and Saturday. If this is your first time here, don't be shy. Hit that subscribe button and that little bell so you get notified every time that we do a brand new episode. So welcome if you are new here and welcome to all of our returning viewers as well. On today's show, um, we're going to start a brand new lengthy project. We are going to start building a brand new 3D printer. Now, what are we building? Well, we're gonna build a Cartesian style printer, much like the Ender 3. Um, we are not going to build an Ender 3, however. We are going to go over to Open Builds, and in Open Builds, they have all kinds of people that have contributed designs and files and things like that. So the one that we're going to use is over here on Open Builds, is called the Prusa i3 Bear Upgrade Version 2. Now we're gonna use this as our structure. So let's find out what's in this file. So as we go down and have a look, um, if you're not familiar with Open Builds, it's a great repository for people who are doing uh, their own 3D printers, building them from scratch, and that's kind of what we're gonna do. In this series, we're not only going to build the printer, but we're going to install firmware, we're gonna pick the parts. Right now, we just wanna get an idea of what we're going to build. So we're gonna build a Prusa style. It'll have the same dimensions and, and same bed size as a Prusa Mark II or Mark III. Um, you can see that this gentleman here, by the way, his name is, I cannot see it. Oh, there it is. No, that's not it. Published by Peck. Yes. And this was published March 31st of 2018. Now, you can do an upgrade on this particular one. I'm hearing noises behind me. Um, you can do an upgrade if you have a, a current printer uh, from Prusa, or you can build this right from scratch. So, this is an aluminum frame conversion for the Prusa i3 Mark II, Mark IIS, Mark 2.5, and Mark III. Um, Joseph Prusa, of course, for anybody that knows, has created a nice little 3D printing empire for himself, and he has, of course, done a great deal to further the advancement of DIY 3D printers. So what are we going to do? Well, we're gonna take the basic design of this particular printer, and I'm gonna show you a couple of pictures here. So this one over here, oh, you can't see my mouse, but um, let's see if we can blow those up. I guess we can't. Um, the one over on the left that you see all of the extrusion um, on the screen, that's the basic idea of what we're going to do. Now, the control box at the back will be different for us because we're going to use a different controller and our uh, power supply will be different because we're going to use a Meanwell power supply. But we are going to cut this all out of extrusion and uh, we'll build it from there. Now, if you do a full upgrade, of course, it is going to cost you a little bit more money. I don't know how much just yet but it will cost you a little bit more. Um, we are gonna price out all this. We'll put together a bill of materials based on what we're doing and uh, we'll publish all of that to our Facebook page. Uh, you can see some of the iterations here. I'll publish a link to this as well on uh, our Facebook channel and uh, also down in the description below. Uh, there's been some change logs. There's, there's uh, currently current status. The half upgrade is finished. The full upgrade is finished for the Mark IIS and the Mark 2.5, but the full upgrade for the Mark III, uh, nobody's built it yet. So what we're going to probably do is build the Mark III. Um, now here are all the links to where to get everything that you need. So uh, let's go to the GitHub first of all. So we'll just head over to GitHub here.
And you will find on the Prusa i3 Bear upgrade, if you just click that link, it's by Greg Son. And you can see down here everything that is um, in this particular download. So we've got some documents, we've got assembly instructions, um, we've got a parts list printed in, the list of parts can be printed in PLA. Uh, we're gonna print all of our parts in, of course, um, ABS. So we have some strength to them. And uh, then we are going to add, I think we're going to add an MKS board to this with uh, some 2130 TL smoothers or Trinamic 2130 uh drivers uh, onto that board. I like using the MKS Gen 1.4, version 1.4 board um, because it's such a versatile board. So we're going to use that one. We are going to install a version of Marlin when we get there in this series. I am going to show you how to, how to get all that. So right now, let's go ahead and download the zip file and then we can uh, dive into it. So this is going to give us an idea of just how much we need. We'll put that in our downloads folder. There we go. Of how much material we need, and we can start to price it out. Um, on the next episode, what we're going to do is price all of these parts out that we plan on putting onto this unit. And then uh, we are going to go ahead and start getting those pieces in and start the construction of the basic frame. Now, the reason I like this is because, first of all, it's all made from extrusion. Uh, it looks like it's all 2040 extrusion. Um, there is some 2020 extrusion in there. Oh, no, it's all 2040 extrusion, it looks like. Uh, these little plates down at the bottom here that you can see behind the motor, uh, you can purchase those pretty much from any place that sells uh, plates. You can actually buy all the parts to build this frame right from open builds. Open Builds has all of these parts available for you to purchase uh, as you need them. We'll go back over here. We can go to the Open Builds build page and we can get an idea of what's been done uh, on this particular unit. And we will just slide down here. So it's showing us, actually it just shows us the same page. So let's go up here and uh, we will look at the the files and drawings so there is one attached file here we'll just open that up and see what we get it says untitled attachment it's a zip file so unfortunately we can't open that uh, full, these are all zip files down at the bottom so we won't be able to open them we would have to download them um, let's look at some of the details on this the Mark II and Mark III is, this is to, to make those frames really rigid. Um, now, some of these problems were solved based on um, Prusa in their latest iteration uh, with the Mark III of going to a 30-30 extrusion, um, which is great on the Haribo edition. Um, and if, for anybody who doesn't know, Haribo is actually a candy. It's, I think it's pronounced Haribo, actually. Looks like it's got a lot of stars. People really like it. Um, so we're going to go ahead and build it. All right, so we know that we're going to need some parts. We've downloaded our zip file. Um, we're going to go ahead and unzip that, and we'll find out what's inside that zip file in just a moment. Okay, so we pulled up some of the images that are available in the download. All of the STLs are in the download. We can see by this uh, graphic here, this, this computer rendering, that we are using, like I said, 2040 extrusion. Um, we have some feet that go on this thing. Um, we are using, this is using the original Prusa bed. Uh, it's using the original Prusa power supply and the original Prusa board. One of the changes that we're going to make, and I'm going to show you this in a few minutes, some of the things that we're going to use. This is what it looks like from the front. Now, if you are upgrading your Prusa to this style because you want something a little bit more rigid, 
Um, what I'm going to recommend is that you make use of the motors that you already use. Uh, we're obviously going to have to get some out of our tickle trunk because I know that we've got some. Um, they're using the original Prusa steel frame here. So there we go. A couple of different renderings there. And they're using the, the Prusa screen at the front. Now, some of the things that we may do a little bit differently uh, than this is I'm thinking that we might use a larger display, um, something that's just a little bit different than the small display. So we're going to, again, we're going to have to custom build our firmware. We're going to have to uh, find an STL for our box and find an STL to hold our Meanwell power supply. Now, because of the board or the bed that we're limited to, uh, let's go back to that. All right, there we are. We'll close this up because we don't need that at the moment. We are going to use an aluminum Y carriage, which uh, we're getting from our good friends over at Spool 3D. We are going to use a Mark 52 base. This is the magnetic heated base uh, designed by Michael, Mikhail Prusa and Joseph Prusa. Um, of Prusa3D.com. Now this is not an exact base. Um, this looks more like the Mark 42 base. Um, it does have some some uh, magnets that have to be replaced here, but we'll uh, we'll get to that. These bore or these beds, although they work very well, they do have some issues. Um, and most notably, the issues on these are that they are manufactured a little bit differently. So we've got a couple of uh, a magnet, magnets there. We, we have confirmed that our Y base plate is going to fit um, underneath there. And uh, it will work for our needs. Now, the beauty of having a magnetic base is now you can use flexible magnetic tops. So we're just gonna line this one up, put it down, and there we go. That lines up pretty good on there. Now this base plate, this flexible base plate has PEI on both sides, just like the Prusa ones do. Um, this of course is a flex plate from Spool 3D who is helping us with this build. We are using the MKS Gen 1.4, as you can see here. Let me go to my overhead here and we'll, uh, we'll just um, show you that a little bit closer. So here we have the MKS Gen 1, version 1.4. This board's been around for a while, but what we've done is we've put uh, Trinamic drivers on it. Um, and these are the TMC 2130s. Um, we are going to bust out some of the control and uh, give us a little bit uh, more control over our micro-stepping. Um, so we'll explain all that as we get into that portion of the build. Um, then we are going to put everything on to a Meanwell 20 or 12 volt power supply. Now you're probably saying, well, Rich, why aren't you going to use a 24 volt? Well, there's a couple of reasons. One, because we don't have a bed uh, that supports 24 volt. So we are going to use an authentic Meanwell 12 volt, 350 watt power supply, which will be more than enough for what we are doing here. Now, we can tell that this is an authentic Meanwell power supply by just going and typing this uh, serial number into our computer uh, over at Meanwell's uh, website, and that will give us um, our uh, report on the manufacturing of this specific power supply. We are going to have to change this to a 110 for our country, but these are far more reliable than power supplies that are twice their size and have nothing going on. Um, so use the Meanwell power supply um, and we will break down all the costs. We'll put together a full list of materials and uh, we'll publish them on our Facebook page in the file section uh, as we go through this build.
So with that said, my friends, that brings us to the end of the introduction of us building a Prusa-style uh, Cartesian machine with a fairly decent build volume, a magnetic bed. So it's going to have some of the things that uh, we've seen in previous iterations. We are going to put a sensor on this one, so we will have auto bed leveling. That will be available to us as well. And uh, when we get it all done, of course, uh, you guys will get to see it. We'll put it into action and we'll see how well it prints. How does it compare to our $349 uh, Ender 3 Pro? How does it compare to some of the other Wanhao i3s of the market? And we are going to do this fairly traditionally, so we are going to use rods and lead screws. Um, so bear that in mind. Again, we will put a full list and breakdown of everything that we're going to use and all the prices. They'll be in Canadian prices, so you guys can convert them to American or European as you see fit and see if it was really worth building our own or just going out and buying a kit. So now it's that time of the show where we thank some people. And first and foremost, I want to thank you for showing up today and uh, being with us as we talked about this introduction. There we go, a big heart. Um, as we talked about the introduction to what we're going to build here. And this series is going to take place over the next few episodes. So you guys are going to come along for the ride. We're going to show you everything that we do step by step. Now, we've got some great people to thank here in our studio. First and foremost, the lovely Jess Corniching, who is behind the controls today. There she is. And uh, we also want to thank Frank Awesome and, of course, Brian Baker and my lovely wife, Geraldine who all work kind of behind the scenes to help us get the show out to you. If you're new here, thank you for joining us today. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and comment down below. Hit that little bell notification so you get notified every time that we do a brand new episode. I want to thank Spool3D.ca because they've got everything you need from printers to filaments and all the parts and accessories you need for your next build project or upgrade. So check them out today at Spool3D.ca. Print it right, print it with Spool3D. Now, if you want to support the show, you can do so by going to buymeacoffee.com slash the first layer. We all drink coffee around here, and, uh, you know, it's always good to have a cup uh, to keep you going throughout the day. And uh, if you'd like to, you can uh, show your appreciation for what we do by going to buymeacoffee.com slash the the first layer. With that said, I'm out of here for today. I will see you guys again on Thursday when we uh, get a little bit deeper into our build. We'll actually start some construction on Thursday and uh, you guys will be along for the ride. We'll, we're going to make mistakes. That's part of the, the process. So until next time, my friends, remember that the first layer is always your foundation to a great print. See you later.